in the old law, if you had a bodily defect, you were disqualified. So perhaps there's an overtone of insult. Many would think that Peter was aiming for his head, and he missed. Perhaps Malchus moved. To me, this makes the most sense. Some see a left-handed attacker. The right ear was cut off. That suggests a left-handed attacker, unless Peter was attacking from behind. Do you really think that these details are important to the theological significance of the story? Probably not. Perhaps Malchus was zealous to see Jesus arrested. There are a couple of ancient Jewish writings that comment that the high priest's servant was noted for his violence. And if that was true of Malchus, then he would have stood out even more as a target, probably easier to access him than to get Caiaphas. At any rate, Jesus' actions demonstrate love for his enemies to the very end. In the Gospels, the last person that Jesus saved was the thief on the cross. The last person he healed was Malchus. Did Malchus convert? Now, if he was never converted, and, and there is, we must admit, no record in church history, then that shows that even a miracle won't cause someone to come to faith. Well, we know that from many passages in, in all the Gospels. And perhaps Malchus never became a Christian. But I wonder about that. If he had become a disciple, that would explain the mentioning of his name. There's another man connected with the crucifixion, Simon of Cyrene, who almost certainly became a Christian. Naming an obscure figure who was of no direct consequence to the early church would have just caused ink to be wasted as they copied the manuscripts. But if Malchus was special to them, if he as a recipient of grace and healing became a brother, then this would have been quite an addition to the gospel story, especially to the passion narrative, where we have the thief on the cross being saved at the end and Malchus healed. Uh, these are at the very end of Jesus' ministry. And we cannot help but wonder these things. And I can't prove it, but I lean, I incline to think that Malchus became a Christian. What are some lessons to learn for us? And I see four in the story of Malchus. One, of course, is that we should pay attention to the details of the Bible. Even seemingly minor characters may have something to teach us. And that's why this series embraces all the characters about whom we have information, major and minor. We should pay attention to the details of the Bible. Put your sword away, Jesus said. Violence achieves nothing. What an important lesson for our time. And closely connected with it is that we should love our enemy. And Jesus demonstrates this all the way to the end. We remember him forgiving the soldiers who were mocking him, who were abusing him, who were gambling for his clothing. And he admitted they don't really know what they're doing. And he asked the Lord to forgive him. He asked the Father to forgive him, which is amazing to me. And he continues to reach out to the end. So the third lesson would be love your enemy. And fourth, this is really from Jesus, not from Malchus. We need to accept God's will, drink the cup, and not rely on human thinking or the arm of flesh to save myself from the cross, which is my tendency. The lessons, pay attention to the details. Violence achieves nothing. Love your enemy and accept God's will and drink the cup. You never know what impact that may have on others.